Hi, and welcome to Wednesday's Word. This is the time of devotion that we are able to really just gather together and just di really dive deep into God's Word. Uh, before I begin, let me just say this. This is not easy. Uh, Tim, I don't know how you did it, but you made it seem so easy. I thought, I, yeah, I could do that. Brother, this is my 10th take. Anyway, let me move on. So tonight, we're going to spend some time in Psalms. So turn with me to Psalms 18. And if you go to Psalms 18, just open your Bible there and just hold on there for a moment. Uh, but let me let me set the scene. And so this is David's victory song. Uh, you know, We all know that he was running from Saul because Saul was after him. And ultimately, God gave him victory. In the same way, God has given us a victory song. When we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he gave us victory. He gave us victory over death that there is no sting in death. There is victory in going home to heaven. And so in Psalms 18 verses one through three, David calls God his strength, his rock, his fortress, his deliverer. And as we read, let God's word remind you of who he is for you, what he has done for you, and what he is still doing for you. So let's read Psalms 18 verses one through three. I love you, O Lord, my strength, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. You see, in these verses, David declares his love for the Lord. We all have felt this way about someone we love. The, the way our hearts fill up with love for our spouse and our family. Just thinking about them makes me want to hug them and tell them that I love them. This is the same type of emotion that, that was felt by Mary Magdalene when she encountered Jesus at the tomb. When the disciples saw Jesus in Matthew 28, 9. Now, considering all the Lord has done for us, how he loves us and has made a way for us to be saved, our hearts should be filled with that same love for him. 1 John 4 and 19 says this, we love because he first loved us. You know, in the first two verses, David calls God my strength nine times. David uses the personal possessive pronoun my. Now, my is one of the first pronouns that, that most children learn. Things like my toys, my house, my room. What they're stating is that they know what is theirs. And in the same way, David is expressing that as well. It's very simple. He is telling us, he is telling everyone that he is totally dependent upon the Lord for everything. Every ounce of his strength comes from the Lord. David's plan is to love the Lord, live for the Lord, and to lean on the Lord for everything he needs and does in his life. Now, that's a worthy goal for every believer, especially during this time of uncertainty. With everything in turmoil, health, jobs, finances. I mean, 3 million people recently filed for unemployment, but that's all temporal. These are all things of, of this world, but not of eternity. And so where do we find our strength? Where do we find our refuge? Where do we find our firm foundation? Well, that's in God, because God is our strength. We should remember that God is our strength. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He is the immovable rock. When everything else in the world is being tossed around and turned upside down, God remains the same forever. Psalms 40 verse 2 says that, you know, that he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. There are times that I don't feel that I have a firm understanding or a firm standing. You know, it, 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 there are times that... There are so many firsts that we're dealing with right now, that, and, and these things are changing in real time. You know, one of the difficult decisions that we had to make recently was, was to go away from in-house service to a virtual service. That was a difficult call and a difficult decision to make to, to tell people not to come to church. And I didn't feel like I had that firm foundation. But when I sought God's face, when I sat down and prayed, and, and we prayed collectively as pastors, we knew that, that our faith was on the rock and that God was there. Because see, God doesn't change. He's immovable. He's unshakable. David tells us that God is all we need. We should rejoice in that truth, that God will give us 
and will be the strength in our lives. None of us knows what we will face in our lives, but we do know that God gives us the strength to overcome, the strength over all the trials that we go through in our lives, because God is our stability. David describes God as my rock. David reminds us that when it appears the world is spinning out of control, the believer can stand above it when he stands on the Lord. He is our foundation. Our relationship with God gives us a different perspective on life because God is our safety. David refers to God as, as like a fortress, like the lofty mountain citadels that he fled to when he was running from Saul. David reminds us that God is a place of safety that we can go to in times of adversity and trials. And make no mistake about it, we will face adversity. We will go through trials, but God is our fortress, our place of perfect peace and safety. He is our refuge. God is our savior. David refers to the Lord as his deliverer. And he is our deliverer as well. This is a word that is filled with glory. Not only did the Lord save us when we received him by faith, but he keeps on saving us day by day until the day he calls us home. God is our sovereign Lord. God is the almighty Lord, the one who is over all things, the one who is in control of all things. Man, I rejoice, it, and, and I'm sure you can too, in the knowledge and knowing that everything that happens is in God's plan, that he is in control of all things. Even when we cannot make sense of it, he's in control. There are a lot of things that I don't understand. And, and, and you know, I don't question God, but I do have questions and they will all be answered when I get to heaven. The one thing that I do know for sure though, is that God is still at the throne. David calls the Lord a shield. When trouble comes uh, into our lives, he acts as a shield to take the brunt of the storm. For, for instance, and I think this is the best example, is Calvary. He was our shield on that day. He stood between us and the terrible wrath that we deserved as sinners, that wrath of God. And he stood and acted as a shield for us. God is our security. Here the Lord is called the horn of salvation. Now a horn is a symbol of strength, a symbol of conquest. When David calls God the, the, the horn of salvation, he is saying the Lord is the strength of salvation and that in his salvation, we have absolute security. We can all rejoice knowing that if you are in the Lord, then you are totally secure in him. He has never lost one yet. And he isn't going to start with you. He didn't save you to lose you along the way. He saved you to take you to heaven. God is our supply. David says that God is our stronghold. This refers to the great towers that were built around these ancient cities. From these towers, soldiers could look down at their attackers and send volleys of arrows down, with, down at them. These towers usually were stocked with ammunition and supplies. So when the soldiers ran into these high towers, they were above the battle. They were in a place of rest and had ready supply. This is the same God that we serve today. When the battle rages around us, he is there. He's given us the supply. And, and we're able to run to him and be lifted above the battles. We can find rest there so that we can face the battles and ultimately win these battles. Remember that the battle is the Lord's. It is no wonder why David praised the Lord. And we have that same, that very same reason to praise the Lord as well. David knew that if God could do it yesterday, that he could be counted on to do it today and tomorrow. Wow, what a reminder that God is all these things to David and he's all these things to us as well. He will protect you. He will provide for you. He will help you and he will be there for you. Our duty, our charge is quite simple. It's to walk by faith and not by sight. Let us remember who God is, what he has done, and what he is still doing. We need to have the faith like the woman who thought that if she could only touch Jesus' robe, that she would be healed. And when she made her way through the crowd and she touched his robe, he turned around because he felt the power leave him. 
And he turned around to her, he turned to her and, and he addressed her and he said, daughter, your faith has made you well. See, it's not things, it's faith. This is the type of faith that we need to have at all times, but especially now, church, this is what we've been prepared for, is to have the faith to continue to press on and to share the good news. How can we share the good news if we're not in a good mood? See, we to overcome the battles in our lives, you know, those feelings of stress, anxiety, fear, doubt, depression, and all those things are real. Those are real emotions. So how do you overcome those things? We overcome those things because the overcomer is in us. And so the same thing, the same way that David praises God and, 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 and how he calls him and the things that he compares him to, it's still the same God that we serve today. I pray that, that this message resonates in your life, wherever you are. Uh, and, and it's my prayer that, that uh, you continue to run to God for security, for safety, for peace and rest during these troubled times. Let us pray. Father God, I just come to you right now, Father. And we, I thank you for this opportunity just to fellowship and, and, and share your word with people, Father. Father, I pray that you touch people's lives today, Father. Father, I lift up the medical personnel, Father. Father, I pray for, for their safety and their family's safety, Father. Father, I pray for uh, the families that are working from home and, 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 and the kids that are home, Father, at school, Father. I pray for their safety, Father. So many times for some, some of our kids, Father, School is an outlet, Father. That is their safety, Father. Father, but you keep them safe, Father, where they are, Father. Father, I pray for our government leaders, Father, that you continue to give them wisdom and discernment, Father, but let them seek your face first, Father. Father, I thank you for the opportunity just to uh, be used by you, Father, in a mighty way, Father. Father, I pray for our church family. I pray for those that uh, are un unsure about their jobs, Father. Father, but one thing they can be sure about is, Father, is you are constant, Father. And Father, in you, we have victory, Father. We ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Ch Church, uh, you know, I have mixed emotions. I'm, I'm, I'm excited that this is a, a new platform for us to, to share God's word. And it can be, uh, t people can see it. Uh, the, the, the reach is exponential. Uh, but also me miss the the face to face meetings. I miss the opportunity to to shake hands and hug y'all. Uh, and so my heart hurts that that I can't hug you. I'm, I'm almost going through withdrawals. But there's going to come a time that that we're going to be together both at Magnolia and Spring, and 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 that's exciting uh, to keep on thinking about that. And, and I can't wait for that. Uh, you know, one thing that I would ask is that all of us. Uh, if everyone could check on someone, uh, you know, it's those phone calls, it's those texts that that I think really uh, keep people, uh, keep their spirits up sometimes, you know, because we get so isolated and a Christian, it, it, the life of a Christian is not to be lived in isolation. We're, we're to fellowship, we're to be with each other and with like-minded individuals and, and share the word and and, and learn more and, uh, about Jesus and and, and what he has done and what he does in our lives. So I would ask that if everyone could check on someone uh, at this time, that that would be great and continue afterwards. Amen. Uh, and so thank you for, for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you online on Sunday. God bless.